Hello, hello. So this will be part two. And now that we understand uh, how to work with the flow and what are the main considerations that we need to take care of, we're going to go to the clumps. Uh, the clumps itself, they are slightly trickier to analyze. And basically one clump will be the union of different hairs bounded by a force. So if we have a force of attraction here, <coughs> we can clump them, right? So that will be an effect like this. But a clump also has different patterns. So if that will be the result, different hairs will be attracted by a single force. But part of the clump is not just the attraction. We have a concept that is called the profile of the clump too. This profile defines how the attraction builds up from the first point towards the base of that point on the surface. So the attraction point, we will represent the clump here by a curve. So my main clump will be that. And my attraction will be where in the clump we are attracting this shape. And that will define my profile. For example, I will do three different levels of clumps here, or three different profiles. On this case, I will use my attraction force and I will draw it with a, a really bright foxia. So in this case, my attraction force will be there my attraction force will be here, and my attraction force will be at the base. And it's going to be constant. So that means that my hair here will behave as a normal clump. So this is one single clump being attracted by the force. And this one is a normal clump being attracted towards that area. And this one here will be a basic clump, but being attracted at the root. So you can see that the profile changes to have this shape, this shape, or this shape. And if we look really closely at this, and we rotate this on this direction, we will get the control that we have in the main softwares. On this one, we will have this. On this one, we will have this. Even less, actually. More on the half of it. And on this one here, we will have something like this. So basically, this will be the control of the profile that we manage and have on the clumps. So this is one of the basic structures of the clumps. We will have an area of effect that goes from the roots and defines the area of attraction based on profiles. So this will be the area of attraction of each of these clumps. Now, this is not the only aspect that will define a clump, but let's show this on a grooming software. I will reset this effect fully to have a basic groom system here. Let me just increase my viewport uh, anti-aliasing so we can have a fans here preview. So it looks like this. And let me just get a smaller amount of hairs. So if I go here to modifiers and create a clump, and I try to generate one single clump out of all my hairs, and I click Save, you can see that we have one basic clump. Let's increase this length uh, over here. So length of 15, that should do. Length of 15. better. 
So what we have here is a basic clump shape that has no influence of the outside world. So it's just a basic clump like this. That's better. And what we saw before is that if I take this shape down, uh, let me just increase the CBs. So let's put something like 20 so we can have super smooth shape. You can see that if I go to the half, we will have this kind of shape. And that basically represents whatever shape we have here. So if one, if we want a really tapered clump, we can just take our shape down as much as we want. Maybe not that much, like at 0 0.01 will be enough. And that will give us a super clumpy hair with a really small bias. But we also can take different shapes and even make our clump bigger than what it is. So we have different levels of control of the profile of the clumps. And why is this important? The first part of why the profile of the clumps are important is because in reference like this one, you can see here that we have different levels of sizes just on the big clumps. And those are the first ones that I'm going to try to check now. So if you look at this one here, this profile of this clump comes like this. So it's almost on the half of the clump. But if you look at something like this one, you have this super expanded clump that after the third, it goes compressing. And then we have clumps like this that they just never attach to the root. So the attraction point should be something like this. And it's imaginary. So we don't have that attraction point even on the same strand. If we take a clump like this big clump that we have here, it's more even created. We can even say or think that this clump is created by the flow and not the actual clumps. But you can see visually a clump there. So we have different shapes. We have different structures. And the clumps itself can depend on shape quite a lot. And this is going to bring a really nice change and breakup of the shape if you have different types of clumps on the same groom. This is something that I have noticed a lot on the grooms, that most of them lack this difference in size and this difference in shape. Just on these six that we have, we don't have even a single one of them with the same shape. We have this one, for example, let's call it clump one. So this one, it's something more like this. It's kind of a straight at the end. And like that. So that's clump one. Let's call this one clump two. So we have the left with a little bit of noise here that goes in and out. And then this one is almost completely straight. So we have clump two. Then let's call this one clump three. This is a smaller, more natural clump, but with a nice bounce. You can see it there. So it's more like a, this kind of clumps. So this is clump three. Then we have clump four, that this one is on half of the clump and goes, I will not use the scale of the clump, by the way, it's not going to be the same scale. It goes to half like this, like a big normal clump, and then tapers in almost all of the weight half left of the clump, even a little bit less. So that's clump four. If we go to clump five, this one here, we have a clump that opens up on the tips. So it goes to the complete opposite of the other clump. So this is clump five. Clump six there has almost the same standard, but keeps the shape across and it's bended toward the left like this and bends. But it has almost a consistent shape across, then just disappears with the other hairs. You can see it there. Then we have clump seven. Look at every one of the clumps that we're selecting right now have a complete different shape than the other. Clump seven is on the third and it starts really fat. So something like this, fat, and on the last third, 
goes really, really vaporish. So something like this looks like it's quite different. Even if they relate on being tapered at the tip, they don't relate that much because they have this difference influence on them. Then we have the last one that is quite a normal one, but doesn't at the end follows the normal convention because it has like a nice kind of twist noise at the end, but never closes. So this is seven and this is eight. So you can see that we have different levels of controls across different grooms on what it's the taper of the actual clumps. So I hope you like this. And if you want to get the same effect, so this is the effect that you can get here in uh, Exgen. Uh, why it's that is not reacting? Oh, because it's not the same uh, here. If I just take it down and close this one. So we have here the basic shapes. And if you don't want this kind of interpolation, you can always go to linear and then you will have a normal interpolation or go to a spline that will give you that. The smooth, it has kind of the same effect, but you will need to change the other one to smooth two or to spline or to flat, whatever the type of uh, groom that you want. Flat can be like this and linear can be the one that gives you the best interpolations across. So bear in mind that because the effect of this line can be quite different. If you go to Houdini, so let's try the same with Houdini. Let me just revert the process of my groomer. And let me just take down a little bit this. Uh, actually, no, I can't. I think I can do it with the amount of guides that I have. So let's go here to turn this off. Uh, let's turn that off and a guide clump. So guides and skin and we have it here and a clump size of five then It's trickier to have the value that we search here because I cannot put it on the corner. But what we can do is to use a hair generate uh, with plant guides or something like that to drive it. So you can even use a Grunberg node uh, just here and say that I just need the skin in this case and push A scatter so we can plant a single guide there and shape or I can just actually change the scale let's see the base options mode Mode options, nope. Yep, scale target length, let's put five. So we have it there. And if I attach this to the custom guide clumps, we will have it. And the control that we will have here comes from the actual clump profile. And we can control it from there. But to actually have this shape, we will need to do a change if we are working in Houdini because it doesn't get us the base shape. So we have for that the wrangle that we know. And I have a preset built in for this. Let me remember how to apply the presets. Okay, I found it here. Uh, it's the clump profile that we have. And this is the code. You will find it on uh, most of the bear tutorials. And what this does, it adds a tightness attribute towards the skin. And we can use this on the blend. So if we remove this value completely, so we have this shape that is a little bit too rough. You can see that we cannot do it more. So we can shorten to match or extend to match. 
to get the shapes, but we cannot get it that much if we have extrude and blend. So what we do is that we look for the skin attribute, no, curve attribute, guide attribute, tightness. And this attribute here, uh, it's called tightness, I don't need this one. will drive the shape of our groom, but something is not working. What's not working, why? We have the points, let me see. Okay, now it's working. I had it connected as my wrangle as points and I need it as primitives, so that was the reason why it was looking like this. So let me just go back to my main viewport and change the color. View background. So we can see it better. So the profile here will be control if we have the tightness on the guide, on the blend, and we have extrude and blend and preserve length depth difference. There is not a problem. And we have the clump profile empty with a value of zero. We can use our custom attribute here to drive the shape, but it's going to drive it on the inverse. So full tightness it's here. And if I take it lower, so let's just bring this high. So if I move this one in, you can see that now it's following the shape on full attraction or non-attraction. So we can control how much of the profile is attracted. So the dark area is going to be the profile of the clump itself. So this is how we can get the same effect of clump profile on the different grooms. And if we don't use something as uh, guide curves, so we can see them like this, and they will all react. And you can add at the end, you can assign a value if you want to get randomization with the different values. But this is how you get it with the different softwares. Most softwares are going to be able to get a value or receive a detail like this. One of the most important things is that this will create some effects on the roots. So it's important to have uh, control over this so you don't create like a super massive attraction on the roots. Instead of that, you most of the time need the roots to be quite uh, sparsers or uh, with no effect so you can fill up more of the base. But that's a trick that you will learn with time. So this is how the clump profile works. I hope you like it and see you in the next one.